Right. Hello, and welcome to the course introduction of USB 3.0, the architecture. My name is Pamela Frenzy, and I will be your instructor for this material. Let's go over a little bit about the course description, what the course is all about. The third generation of USB, called SuperSpeed USB, has just been released as far as the specification itself goes. A lot of product getting ready to move over to USB 3.0 due, due to a lot of reasons, being the speed is so much faster, it's so much more efficient. We'll look at transfer rates being up to 5 gigabits per second improved flow control, power management. Power management is a big factor today due to the fact that we are dealing with portable electronics, portable platforms, and power management is even more crucial. We'll also look at the improved flow control. If you're familiar with USB 2.0, the flow control was not very efficient. It's much more efficient now. We'll look individually at each of the protocol layers and what changes were made in those protocol layers. A lot of changes made to make the protocol more efficient, especially for things like large transfers, large files, and speed. Speed's a big, big issue. USB 2.0 will briefly be reviewed because USB 3.0 is required to be backward compatible. So you can't just develop your product or your platform with USB 3.0, it must include USB 2.0 as well. So you need to understand everything about USB 2.0 since you'll have to incorporate that within your product. Let's look at what you're going to gain in the course. We're going to look at the required backward compatibility with US 2 with USB 2.0. So you'll have to go back and look and refresh your memory on USB 2.0. So we'll cover that. We will look in detail at the new bus architecture. We will define the new super speed data flow model, totally new data flow model to increase flexibility, to increase performance, to increase data throughput. So we'll look in detail at that. You'll be able to identify the host and the device requirements and what has changed with those. You'll also actually analyze traffic that's on the bus. We're going to use LaCroix protocol analyzer and you'll get to see actual data that was captured on the bus including the different transfer types and you'll be able to look at those and determine what was actually occurring. What makes up an actual data transfer and you'll look at the handshaking on that actual data transfer but you'll be able to take real data and determine what the communication was and what's going on within that data. We'll also also look at power management therefore you'll be able to identify the power management features that are added to USB 3.0 much better power management features from the standpoint that the device has a lot of the role in choosing power levels that the device will be operating at so you'll be able to describe and understand those you'll be able to implement the requirements necessary to design a fee a link and the protocol layers in USB 3.0 Prerequisites for the course, what do you need to have coming into the course? Well, obviously you need some understanding of the base specification, the USB 2.0 specification. Again, because 3.0 is backward compatible. So you should understand the transfer types and that kind of stuff, how data flows in USB 2.0. So let's look at the module topics that we're going to cover within USB 3.0. First, we want to cover an overview of USB 2.0 to refresh your memory in the nuts and bolts that make up USB 2.0. We need to look at the transfer types in USB 2.0 because those same transfer types are required in USB 3.0. We'll look at packets and what makes up a packet, what the different fields in a packet are. We'll look at descriptors be able to understand how a device explains itself in USB through the device descriptors. Then we'll get into configuration in USB, look at how the configuration model works. Finally, we'll get into the USB architecture itself and look at the big picture first because we want to look at what USB 3.0 is and then we'll dive into the specific details. We'll look at the new data flow model. 
This is pretty neat in the fact that they really improved the data flow as far as efficiency goes in USB 2.0. They improved it for USB 3.0. We'll look at then the layers. We'll look at the physical layer. What has changed in the physical layer? What are the new requirements in the physical layer? We'll look at the data link layer and see what the new requirements in the data link layer are because the data link layer has had many changes as well. We'll then look at protocol packets. There are a lot of new packets that were added to USB 3.0 and we'll look at these and see what these entail. We'll look at how transfers are done. Again, a more efficient transfer model in 3.0. Talk about device states and enumeration. Device states, just like device states were in USB 2.0, we'll look at what the new device states are, especially when we get into the power management stuff. We'll look at the device requests that are required and then the optional device requests. And we'll look at descriptors and how those are parsed by the host to understand the device. Hubs, hubs of course have a big role in USB and they do in USB 3.0 as well. So we'll look individually at hubs and look at how hubs have to manage not only the super speed side, but they also have to manage the USB 2.0 side. Power management had major changes made into it as far as USB 3.0. Very great improvements in power management. So we'll look at that efficiency and cover the different power states that have been added in USB 3.0. We'll look at a new protocol called UAS. UAS was added for serial attached SCSI, so we'll look at that. Finally, we'll get into some actual data traffic analysis, and this is where we'll pull up capture data and look at how traffic flows in USB. We'll look at the packets, we'll look at what the acknowledgements look at, we'll look at how the handshaking is done as far as a device or the host saying, here's how much data I can take. We'll look at the different transaction packets so we can look at how link management's done. We can look a little bit how power management's done. As far as the curriculum path, where you go after USB 3.0, obviously coming into USB 3.0, you need to have some understanding of 2.0. But once you have some understanding of 3.0, there are a couple different places that you'll probably want to go. First of all, in USB, there's the mass storage class specifications. So if you're designing or working with a device, for example, a device that falls in the HID class, like a mouse, you would want to know more about the HID class. If you were working in the marketing where you're doing hub design and hub implementation, or if you're doing embedded hub implementation, then you need to go to the, the specification on hubs. So we have a new mass storage class specification that you'll need to look at as well. And then other hardware specifications like PCI Express, for example, because many times USB is embedded on PCI Express. So that's kind of an idea of where to go as far as curriculum path. The quizzes for the course can be downloaded from the download section on the course page by clicking on the downloads, as you see here. Any questions that you have, please be sure to use the question and comment box. Now, let's get started with the course.